Happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today, we're talking about assisted dying. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Julia Lamb filed a lawsuit against the federal government on the basis of the new assisted dying laws that she argues contain the same constitutional defects that were originally found by the Supreme Court of Canada in the Carter case. In her case, she argued that she should be able to rely on all of the factual findings and evidence relied on by the court in the Carter decision rather than having to relitigate everything. The Attorney General of Canada filed a response indicating that it did not agree that the facts and the evidence were the same in relation to the issue of assisted dying and asking that the matter be relitigated in its entirety. Ms. Lamb filed an application to strike that on the basis of the fact of is issue estoppel, essentially arguing that this has already been decided, the foundation is already laid, and it wouldn't be a good use of judicial resources to re-decide all of these issues on the basis of effectively the same evidentiary record. Her application was dismissed, and the claim is proceeding on the basis of a new hearing entirely. She sought leave to the Supreme Court of Canada, and leave was dismissed. But this case raises a very important issue. Where you have legislation that's declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court of Canada and that's replaced with new legislation that arguably shares those same flaws, shouldn't it be better and wouldn't it be easier and more efficient and in the interests of, of efficient use of judicial resources to just allow these cases to be heard on the basis of the original evidence filed in the original hearing? After all, the Supreme Court of Canada granted the government an extension of time to create legislation to address the concerns. So because the legislation that Ms. Lamb is dealing with is legislation that was was written in response to the decision in Carter, doesn't it make better sense to just look at what was before the court in Carter and ask the question, does this new legislation do enough to allow people the opportunity to die with dignity? Unfortunately, the Supreme Court of Canada denied leave to appeal the case, and the issue is going to have to be decided for another day. This means days, weeks, even years of court time spent hearing this issue, and all the while, people who may be in need of a dignified death are going to have to endure a slow and painful process that's not going to give them the satisfaction or the desired outcome that they need and that they want. This is an unfortunate issue because it impacts the lives of so many people who are facing serious illness that impacts their lives every day. And the Supreme Court of Canada had an opportunity to help to bring an end to the suffering for those people in a way that they want. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait and see the outcome of the case, but I hope that the Supreme Court of Canada, if it does get the chance to hear Ms. Lamb's case in another forum, will take the opportunity to ensure that the record is clear and that this can't be relitigated again on the basis of fresh evidence again. You're watching Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada But Didn't. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada But Didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law Corporation. Thank you to Brazen Bull Creative for putting together these videos. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and tune in next week.